Time now for the Sunday Roundtable. And joining us this morning, Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Ray. Great to see you guys. All right. Congressman Jake Auchincloss broke new ground on Capitol Hill last week. Here is part of the speech he delivered on a bill that would create a U.S.-Israel artificial intelligence center. Take a listen. We must collaborate with international partners like the Israeli government to ensure that the United States maintains a leadership role in AI research and development and responsibly explores the many possibilities evolving te technologies provide. Now, if you're not exactly captivated by the language, that speech was actually generated by the online AI chatbot chat. GPT. He said he did it to spur debate on AI and the challenges and opportunities it creates. Marianne, mission accomplished? Well, it's a clever press ploy. He got a ton of coverage all over the country, not just here. But there's something bigger going on here. I mean, Jake is really raising his profile and starting to raise money. And we're only in the first month of 2023. And you can see he's on the books trying to put together a women's fundraiser led by Beth Bolin and Micho Spring, two powerhouses, to, you know, build more support amongst women. This partnership with Israel on, on AI certainly would help with Jewish voters. So you're starting to see the beginnings of Jake Ochenklaus's next race and it's starting to look like a Senate race. Starting to campaign? Yeah. Rob? Interesting. I, I mean, as one of 435 members of Congress, it's really hard to stand out, let alone to make national news. He pulled it off. I agree it was clever. It worked. A Senate race. You've gotten my attention. Mm. There are two Democratic United States senators here already. Ask Diane Feinstein. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about Boston Mayor Michelle Wu, fresh off her first State of the City address. She went big on housing issues, rent control, free city land for affordable housing development, making new construction fossil fuel free. She will need a lot of help from Beacon Hill to do that. Rob, does she have that level of support? Listen, this is mostly a fantasy wish list. I mean, I, I want to shoot under par at the Masters, <laughs> okay? But I realize I'm not going to do it. Um, and, and to take it more seriously, there are massive, massive costs associated with everything that she proposed. Uh, she has no interest in limiting spending. Mm. Well, housing was at the top of the list, and as someone who's been spending a number of nights recently watching focus groups across Massachusetts, let me tell you, out of everyone's mouth, unsolicited, top of the list, housing, housing costs, rent costs. So she's right. She's on it. And when you look at her proposals, you can see, you know, what she's trying to do. I would say, though, to the people who are saying, like, the 10 percent rent increase is too, is not aggressive enough, Wait till she tries to go get those votes up at the state house. I hope all her critics are going to go with her because this farm is not as progressive as people think. If, 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 if the person who runs the city of Boston mm -hmm. or the city of Boston wants to do something, why, why is there a requirement that the state house be a player in Home it? Home rule petition. I mean, they have well, say on it. I'm and sure. rent control yeah. is such a bad idea, <laughs> right, that there should be adult supervision. Well, it's cheaper, again, to try to keep people in their homes. And it takes time to build affordable housing. We see all the cranes in Boston. It is the engine for the state and the city and New England. But those are office buildings, high-end, you know, residences, all that stuff. Affordable housing is at the bottom of the list. All right. Let's move to Congresswoman Catherine Clark, the Democratic whip. She had to take some political heat. Her 23-year-old daughter charged with assaulting a police officer during a protest in Boston. This is what she said about the incident. I condemn violence against everyone, whether that is against police or against community members as a result of, of any person or government entity. To be clear, she was asked if she condemned violence against police officers. Critics say that comment did not go far enough to condemn the violence, accusing her of being anti-police. Rob, what do you think about that? It was a big mistake not to, not to forcefully criticize those who assault police officers. Um, she's establishing her, herself with, with this comment and, and other actions. She's in the woke lane. She's not in the moderate lane of the Democratic Party. And, and the moderate and conservative lane of the Democratic Party, that's the growth stock in Democratic politics. Oh. Marianne? I mean, what part of that quote don't you understand? I condemn violence against anybody, police or otherwise. And it seems to me a lot of the critics were the very people who didn't defend police on January 6th and still don't. So let's, I mean, as a parent and a politician, she handled this as well as you possibly could. She supported her daughter. She supports the legal process. And she support, She opposes violence against anybody. So any more than... That was a word she, salad. She, that was a word no, salad. Well, just Rob, that is plain word English. salad. Just, she didn't want to say condemn. straight up 
don't assault police officers. She said that. Didn't want to say. Did it. you watch the clip? She had it's to, right there. She had to inject the other sort of politically no, no. correct words I to disguise it. I condemn violence against anybody, police, and any government entity. Hmm. Period.